something happens, then 12 o'clock something else happens, and then 12.15 we leave. So what we're going to be doing is, um, corresponding to every verse of Shikshastakam, as you all know, the different pairs of the Hare Krishna mantra, as explained by Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, and his Sri version of Rahasya, each pair of the Hare Krishna mantra corresponds with one of the verses of the Shikshastakam prayers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Although he's God himself and the greatest scholar of his time, of all time, he left us only eight verses which are the Shikshastakam prayers. So, for every verse of the Shikshastakam prayers, which are only like four lines each, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur wrote a song. So every day, we're going to sing one of those songs before the 11 o'clock class starts. So class, as you know, starts at a quarter two. But part of that quarter two till 11 will be the singing of one of the Shikshastakam prayer um, correlating songs of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. So today, Madhukar Prabhu, our um, great leader of Kirtan, will lead us in the first verse song of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, which is on page 184 of the songbook. Do you have cartels in Murdanga? Murdanga, any cartels? Anybody? Is it far away? Okay. Oh, Temple. Okay. Okay. To last for five minutes total.
So for those who came in at the middle of the kirtan, the schedule will be, we meet at quarter to 11, we sing one of the songs of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur that corresponds with one of the verses of Shikshastakam. Today we sang the song that corresponded with the first verse. The first verse, as you know, includes all the other verses of Shikshastakam. Each phrase of the first verse consecutively correlates with the subsequent and succeeding verses of Shikshastakam. For example, Chaito Dharpana Marjanam the cleansing of the dust from the mirror of the heart. The holy name destroys ignorance, just as the sun dissipates darkness, illusion, and fear when it comes up. At night we may be thinking a monster is crawling into my window, or a hand is crawling up my bed, or I wonder what's in the closet. But as soon as the sun comes up, all fears and illusion and ignorance dissipates. And just as one cleanses the mirror of the heart, so the first stage of chanting is that the dust of the mirror of the heart is cleansed. Or, another example Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur gives, just as a cloud scatters, did I say cloud? Just as the wind scatters a bunch of clouds. So the bunch of ignorance and obstacles, impediments, um, anartas are destroyed by the chanting, pure chanting of the holy names. Okay. So here we have the golden complexion savior of the age of Kali, Sri Gaur, sings as follows, overwhelmed with bhav. And this is the definition given of param vijayate Sri Krishna Sankirtanam. Sankirtanam means sarva bhavena kirtan, with all the bhavs that come with a melted heart when one comes to the stage of jata rati sarak, bhav sarak. All glories to Sri Krishna Sankirtan which cleanses the mirror of the heart and delights the soul. O glorious to Sri Krishna Sankirtan, which, even if chanted indifferently, this, this is a trick, it's a trick statement, even if chanted indifferently, has the tendency to extinguish the forest fire of material existence and end all suffering. As we've been discussing, it's all relative to the stage that we're on. So later in this first chapter, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur explains that even if chanted indifferently, if there is no offense, then it extinguishes. So it begins to, as one is, begins to chant. But the absolute meaning is all at the stage of bhav and mostly prem. All glories to Sri Krishna Kirtan, which casts moonbeams upon the white lotus of good fortune. That is the third phrase. Second phrase, Baba Maha Davagni Nirvapanam. And then the third phrase, do you all have the Shikshastakam prayer in front of you? If you don't already know it, what page is it on again? Hmm? 329. 184. So the third verse, third phrase, which corresponds to the third verse of Shikshastakam, which oral also corresponds to Nista, the stage where anarthas are starting to disappear and one becomes fixed and determined and all of his, and his bhajan and principles. 
So then Shreya Koida Vachandra Kavataranam is what's being sung here. What page is that on again? I lost the page. The song? Oh, the song. 184. 184. So the white water lotus of all auspiciousness begins to blossom. And Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur quotes a verse which is in our songbooks, Mangalacharan, which is <coughs> Madhura Madhura Meitan. As if it's, what page is that? And then we can all look at it. Well, it's, it's, isn't it also in the Mangalachara? No, it's not in the not, in, not, not anymore? So where is it? Okay. Very important verse. Uh, when Srila Gurudev sometimes calls on devotees to explain the glories of the Holy Name, he's always happy when a devotee, in speaking before the class, will quote this verse. Madhura madhura metan mangalam mangalanam sakala nigamavali satkritam chit swarupam that means that the holy name is more auspicious than anything, all collective auspiciousness in all universes. And it's sweeter than all the sweet things of all the universes. It's the uh, mature fruit of the desire tree of all the Vedic scriptures. Sakradati Paridhitam Shradaya, if it's chanted with faith or it's chanted indifferently, if there's no offense, then it immediately liberates one from the um, hell of material existence. Then Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur continues. All glories to Sri Krishna Sankirtan, the life of the bride of transcendental knowledge and the embodiment of perfection. In one of the verses, um, one of the later verses of this chapter, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur expands that along with Srila Gurudev's Rahasya Vritti, or his commentary on Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur's words, which is that transcendental knowledge, knowledge is one, is one potency or shakti. And that shakti has two functions, vidya and avidya, or knowledge and ignorance. Ignorance is actually the knowledge of this world which Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur said is just like an avalanche that pierces my heart and makes me just like a donkey that has to carry the heavy load of material uh, activities, aspirations, responsibilities. And then there's vidya, or real transcendental knowledge. And the uh, life of that transcendental knowledge which fixes one at the lotus feet of Krishna is compared to a wife or a bride and that is the Hare Krishna mantra. So within the Hare Krishna mantra there's Krishna and Radha and by the power of the Hladini Shakti, the pleasure of the potency of the Lord, all that takes place, full knowledge, full bliss and at every, mom every moment an increasingly ever fresh existence where every moment is newer than the previous moment, if that can be conceived, it can at this stage. All glories to Sri Krishna Kirtan, 
which bestows the taste of nectar at every step. Padam Padam. This chanting is the fountainhead of pure love of God. What is that? What's the phrase? Shreya Koya Vachandra Kavataranam Vidyavadu Jivan Ananda Ambudi Bhartanam. Ananda Ambudi Bhartanam means it increases the ocean of transcendental bliss. At every moment, it expands how much? Unlimitedly due to the ever, this is, this is the words of Gurudev's Vritti commentary, the ever increasingly ever fresh attachment to the holy name. The ocean of transcendental bliss increases at every moment, unlimitedly. Srila Prabhupada, our Srila Prabhupada gave an interesting example because we were in New York. So New York City is right by the Atlantic Ocean, very big ocean. And he said, if this ocean were to increase even a little bit, the whole city would be flooded. But the ocean of transcendental bliss floods and increases at every moment. Even though the jiva is infinitesimal, called Anu Chaitanya. That means infinitesimal living spirit. Still, there's unlimited bliss that fits there that increases at every moment. And then, all glories to Sri Krishna Kirtan, which bathes the soul of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Sarvatma Snapanam is the last phrase before Parang Vijayate Sri Krishna Sankirtanam. It bathes the soul of who? It bathes the soul of one who's chanting in this way, realizing that Nam and Nami are one, and absorbed fully by the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra, the different pairs corresponding to the eight yams, or eight periods of the day, of Radha and Krishna's pastimes. And so that devotee is absorbed in meditating on those pastimes and forgetfulness of his identity of this world. The beginning of the forgetfulness of the identity, the semblance starts coming in the uh, fifth stage, which is called asakti which corresponds to the fifth verse, I hope, of Shikshastikam. Ai nanda tananja kinkaram patitam maam misame bhavam budo. Oh, <clears throat> son of Nanda, I am your eternal servant, but somehow or other I've fallen into this ocean of material existence. Please pick me up and engage me as one of the particles of your lotus feet. So at this fifth verse, uh, which corresponds to one of the phrases of the first verse, the devotee is starting to understand himself or a semblance of realization of himself as the eternal servant of Krishna. And he begins to fervently pray with tears for that service. And that is the stage of asakti. And he begins to, as he's coming to the next stage, because asakti is the forerunner of Bob. So Bob is coming to him quickly. And he's beginning to see himself as maid servant of Srimati Radhika. So it bathes the soul, body, mind, and soul. Anyone who wants material des desires fulfilled and anyone who wants liberation, the holy names will do that. That's also included. But one is also bathed of any misconceptions by body, by mind. The body becomes completely free from all sinful reaction. More sins then one is able to commit 
in many, many lives are dissipated by simply the chanting of Nama Bas. That's not even Shuddhanam. <coughs> so who can give the seed of Shuddhanam? Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur explains that one from whose eyes tears are falling like torrents of rain, who is uh, hairs are standing on end and whose body is trembling from chanting the holy name, he can deliver another soul from the cycle of birth and death through the medium of chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra in his Sangha. So very nice song. Incidentally, um, during the Kartik month in Chandigarh, because Chandigarh is not Braj, so there's no Braj Mandala Parikrama. So what the devotees there do, previously under the guidance of Shula Bhakti Balatirtha Goswami Maharaj, and now under Shula Bhakti Vigyan Bharati Maharaj, they follow Bhajan Rahasya throughout the day. That is, in the morning, correct me if I'm making a mistake on any timings, in the morning before Mangalarti or after? Before Mangalarti, they sing the first song. And then after Mangalarti, they sing the second, second song. And then Shilabharati Maharaj uh, reads uh, the corresponding first yam of the pastimes of Radha and Krishna, which are summarized in verses at the end of each chapter of Bhajan Rahasya. Then they go out for Harinam Sankirtan, then they come back nine-ish, and then they sing the next song of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. And then in the evening, before class, they sing the next couple of songs, and then after class, they sing the last song. And for every single song that they sing, they read the corresponding pastime of um, Radha and Krishna's daily activities, and in that way they follow Bhajan Rahasya. Uh huh. Uh huh. Thank you. So, although it's stated that there are no hard and fast rules for chanting the holy names, we hear. No consideration of time, place, or circumstance. Still, in texts uh, 33, 34, and just before that, we get a, a series of very interesting rules. But, is Manohari here? Yes. Yeah. All the rules, you'll be happy to know, are all Artha Pravriti, all positive things to do which, as you mentioned yesterday in the form of an interesting question, automatically includes anartha nivriti, or the washing away of all um, unwanted, unfavorable habits, thoughts, and activities. So, these rules apply these rules apply both to Hari Nam chanting and to the chanting of the Gayatri Mantra. One is always chant with the right hand. Don't let the beads fall from the hand. And as Gurudev says always at initiation, don't chant with this finger because this is the anger finger. Before asakti, our tears in, in relation to bhakti and hari nam chanting are crocodile tears. One minute I'm chanting, oh fabulous melody, it just brings me to tears. And next minute, don't you realize who I am and you didn't follow what I said? I'm going to break your leg. So that's the anger finger. So that finger doesn't touch the beads. 
So chanting, the rule is to chant one-pointed without any mundane topics. Sometimes Gurudev imitates Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Wow, it's like that. I can't believe you. I have seen you in such a long time. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari Hari. And where are you coming from? Russia? Or have you been traveling with Maharaj? Ram Ram, Hari Hari. So, or nobody's there. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna. How dare they say that about me? What can I do to take revenge? Ram Ram, Hari Hari. So all this is out. Rule. And also to meditate on the meaning of the chanting which are unlimited meanings, as we'll discuss in the next couple of minutes. So, number one, to fix the mind on the holy name and simultaneously remember the pastimes. One day in 1992, I asked Gurudev, do you mean to say that as we're chanting our 16 rounds, I chanted 16 rounds in those days, as we're chanting our 16 rounds, we simultaneously think of a prayer that makes us remember the pastimes. And then he, so he pretended he was doing it. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. And then all of a sudden he breaks out in song, Asanti. Yasya kadapi vasananchala kela nota danyati danya pavanena kritartamani Yogendra Durga Magati Madasudanapi. Tasya Anamos to Bashabana Bhuvo de Shapi. I offer my obeisances to the direction where of Srimati Brishabanu, the daughter of Brishabanu Devi. Uh, Rishabhanu Maharaj. She's sitting on one side of Radha Kund in Maan, sulky mood, refusing to talk to Krishna because of some offense that he did. So pleading with her and pleading with her and getting no reply, he goes to the other side of Radha Kund and <coughs> intensely feeling her separation. The heir wants to do some service. So the heir on the direction of Vrinda Devi, goes under the anshal, the veil of Radharani, and takes her fragrance and carries that across Radha Kund to reach Krishna and go into his nostrils. And then that Krishna, which is not attained even by the greatest yogis like Brahma and Shiva and other powerful demigods, he feels that his life has reached perfection because now he has attained the daughter of Brishabhanu Maharaj. Just as he's, everything about him is absolute, same thing with her. Her fragrance, he feels her presence. She went there through her fragrance. So remembering pastimes, remembering prayers, for uh, remembering pastimes, remembering prayers for um, in, in humility, ex praying for deliverance and praying for service. I once asked Gurudev, is it okay to remember the prayer to Giriraj Govardhan while chanting the Hare Krishna mantra? That, oh Giriraj Govardhan, the Lord's 24-hour-a-day pastimes, you are witnessing. They take place in your caves and kunjas. So although I'm very wretched and fallen, please give me a place at your lotus feet in one of your valleys so that I can follow in your footsteps and experience promote pramada madana, your madness of ecstasy, as you witness their pastime. So I asked Gurudev, is it okay to, to pray to Giriraj while I'm chanting? He said, you can pray to anyone who can help you. So all these personalities are within the Hare Krishna mantra because all the pastimes are within the Hare Krishna mantra. What is that phrase in the Nam Sankirtan song? Amala Hari Nam Ami Abhilas 
unlimited pastimes are situated in the holy names. That's why there are unlimited meanings, too. Prabhupada gave us a very introductory meeting in one, at one time. O oh God, O oh energy of God, I'm suffering in this material world, serving illusion, your illusory energy. Please pick me up into your spiritual energy and engage me in your service so that I can be happy. And that's the core meaning of all these other songs. We can pray to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. What's that, Vasanti? Sangsara Dukha Jalato Patitas. It's not that everybody has to learn Sanskrit verses and sing them while you're chanting <coughs> the Sanskrit Hare Krishna mantra and simultaneously translating. If that's not easy for you, then you can just remember the English or Russian or Chinese translation while chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. But the prayer to uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Sangsara Dukkha. I'm so miserable being drowned in the ocean of material existence under a net. So it's not that I could, okay, I'm under the ocean. It's not that I could swim up because there's a tight net around me. And it's not that I could just break away out of the net because there are crocodiles and alligators that are chewing at me. Crocodiles and alligators of lust, anger, greed, pride, illusion, and envy as I'm in this net. There's no question of breaking out. And even if I could knock down all the alligators and crocodiles, which I can't, still it's going to be impossible because my hands are chained behind my back by the chains of wicked desire. So I find no shore to this ocean, O Chaitanya Chandra. Please pick me up and fix me at your lotus feet, which means engage me in Raganuga Bhakti and Rupanuga Bhakti. So, number one, fixing the mind on the name and remembering the pastimes or prayers <coughs> for remembering those pastimes. Associating with sadhus, controlling the mind by renunciation and practice. Just like suppose all of you came here by plane, airplane, and in order to get on the airplane, you had to have a ticket. If you didn't have the wherewithal to get a ticket in advance, then you're going to be on standby. And if you're on standby, I have experience, maybe you do too, you don't always get on the plane. Because there are not always that many cancellations at the last minute. So the preparation or buying the ticket in advance is practicing renunciation, um, being renounced, and practicing the principles of bhakti so that when we're about to start chanting, we have that strength. Then external cleanliness too. And internal cleanliness and also external cleanliness. External cleanliness is not as important as internal cleanliness. There's a very beautiful story that I'll tell as quick as I can. There was a devotee who wanted to get initiated. So his guru said, all right, come tomorrow, take bath in the Jamuna, come tomorrow, in the river, whatever river, and come tomorrow. Then he told a street sweeper, from a little bit of a distance, when he comes to me after taking bath, throw some dust from your bucket, dust and dirty leaves, near him, not on him, but near him, so that some will splatter on him. So the street sweeper did that, and the he said, but the guru said, but then immediately run, because he's going to try and attack you. So as soon as that happened, the devotee, or aspiring devotee, immediately went to beat him, and he, but he got away. Then he came to his guru, and he said, okay, I'm ready. So then his guru said, no, you're not ready. Come back next year. Oh, he wanted to go again to take bath. He said, no need. He went back to take another bath, he came back, and Guru said, no, you're not ready, come back next year. So next year the same thing happened, but this time the Guru told the street sweeper to throw the dust and leaves a little bit on his body. He said, he's not going to be so bad this year, but still get, a, get away as fast as you can. 
So he was less angry, but still angry. Again went to take bath, again came to his Gurudev. Gurudev said, come back next year. The next year, he told the street sweeper, throw the whole bucket on his head <laughs> and step back. His, the poison is the poison of the snake bite is gone, but still step back. So that's what happened. And then he was just about to get angry, but then he thought, actually, no, you're my uh, Varma Pradarshika guru. By your mercy, I'm becoming free from anger so that I can become qualified to get, take initiation from my Gurudev. So he was just about to go back and take bath again, and his Gurudev said, no, you're clean. Come, I'll give you initiation. <laughs> so external cleanliness by Archan. Archan forces us to have external cleanliness, which also gradually takes away lust and other impediments. Another rule, have a peaceful, undisturbed mind. If some disturbance wants to come, we can tell it to come back another time. And we'll go through more um, details of how to make the mind more peaceful and undisturbed while chanting. Another rule is don't, this is a don't, don't be discouraged if the advancement is slow. Have patience because according to the amount of sukritis and sanskars from our previous life, as opposed to offenses and sins, it's going to be slow or fast. All right, then the sixth rule is called, well, according to this number, this six, maybe I merged a couple. So six is called mantra, art, chintan or meditating on the meaning of the mantra. Mantra, art means meaning, and chinta means meditating. That uh, rule has five limbs. The first limb, that is, if, as Manohara Prabhu said, if we give our mind positive engagements, there won't be any room for the negative engagements. So the first limb of mantra, art, chinta, is to meditate on the deity of the mantra, the mantra devata. Who is he or she? What are his or her qualities? What is the meaning of the mantra? And what is my relationship with that deity? So there's a lot of positive things to think about. Then the second limb is called Nyas. Nyas has two features. That means, particularly for Gayatri Mantra, what are the rules and regulations, like I face east in the morning, east at, uh, east at noon, and north or east in the evening, but better to face the deities, and do Achman if you're doing Gayatri, otherwise do it mentally if you're on an airplane, or so it, such and such. So, and the main part of Nyas is to consider that the deity, to have conviction that the deity of the mantra, that is the Hare Krishna mantra or Gayatri mantra or any mantra that we're chanting, the deity of the mantra is my protector. I have no other protector and he will protect me. So that's Nyas, that conviction. The third limb is called property. The meaning, property is like uh, the forerunner of Sharanagati. Sharanagati means surrender, but it has six features, six limbs of Sharanagati. So the general resolve of general Sharanagati, surrender, which is there in property, is I take shelter of the deity of the mantra. Meaning I don't have to worry about anything. Okay, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, where am I going to pay my bill for my room? Somebody just stole, the day before I came from Russia to India, the day before I came, somebody hacked into my um, account and stole all the money that I had for my plane ticket and all the money that I was going to use in India. 
oh my God, what am I going to do? I can't concentrate on this holy name. So property is that I take shelter of the holy name. No need to worry. The, the deity of the holy name will take care of everything. Fears for the future, lamentations over the past, everything is taken care of by the mantra devata. That conviction, that resolve is called property. Then the fourth limb is called sharanagati, which is that I am a suffering jiva. And how much am I suffering? I'm suffering to the extreme. We forget all the time. Gurudev explained that it's just like a person who's drunk a lot of alcohol and he's suffering and he's falling in a drain, filthy drain, and the filthy dogs are <coughs> licking, his, licking his nose to, to get the salt on his nose and licking his cheeks to get the perspiration, the salt from the perspiration. And he's thinking, I'm the monarch of all I survey. And he's lying in a filthy drain. You've seen the drains in Vrindavan. So I am suffering to the extreme. I'm a tiny jiva, suffering. So I surrender to the mantra devata, the deity of this mantra. And what are the six features of surrender? To accept everything favorable for chanting the mantra, to reject everything unfavorable. If I watch a video when nobody's looking, I'm thinking, then the video will come into my mind when I'm chanting. If I have a fight with somebody, the fight will come into my mind while I'm chanting. And that will be Nam Aparad. And what's the result of Nam Aparad? We sent out one Harikata, which was called Easy Money by Nama Parad. <laughs> Nama Parad, you may get money, but then with the money you commit sins and go to hell. It's <laughs> a trick of the name. So then, rejecting everything unfavorable, uh, thinking the Lord is my only protector and my only maintainer, and he will maintain me. Then, to think myself meek and fallen, so he'll surely want to take care of me. And what's the last one? Hmm? With that was there, think myself meek and fallen. And to have no separate desire. Amani Peksha, to have no separate desire than the desire of the Lord. And that Atmani Vedana is also the fifth limb of Na, uh, mantra or chintan for chant, it's the fifth limb of chanting, which is that everything that belongs to me, everything that I thought belongs to me, I now understand doesn't belong to me. It all belongs to Krishna, Radha and Krishna. And in fact, I also don't belong to myself. So I have no right to use myself as I like, or I don't even have any right to think what I like for sense gratification, or um, anger, or frustration. I have no right, because I belong to Krishna, and my mind belongs to Krishna. So I am meant for his enjoyment. This conviction is uh, called Atmani Vedana which is the fifth limb of chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur explains, and then at 12 o'clock, we're going to have comments, questions, things you want to add from, to what I said, things you want to subtract, because I said something wrong. So the schedule is a quarter to 11 to 11. We come gradually into the class by Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur's songs. And we can even, if there's time, if we're all here, uh, we can even read from Bhaktivinoda Thakur's um, quoting of the Govinda Lilamrita, the pastime at the end of each chapter. And then from 11 to 12, I have to hurry along because guess what? There are eight chapters and today I'm finishing the first chapter. And then there are more teachers coming, so I'm giving less classes. So, okay. 
Um, that having been said, and then at a quarter, uh, 12 o'clock to 12.15, any comments, discussion? All right. So, Shilabhakti Manod Thakur is explaining, and with the assistance of Shila Gurudev's commentary, that one comes to understand that the holy name is non-different from everything about Krishna. So the devotee wants to study what is Krishna like. So then Bhaktivinoda Thakur and Srila Gurudev discuss, I think it's from Srila Jiva Goswami, that there are four features of that absolute truth. One is his original form. All these four features are manifest by his desire. And he, he, he can't even desire without his desire potency, can he? So his desire cannot be fulfilled, nor can he even desire without his desire potency, his Ladini Shakti, Srimati Radhika, his Achintya Swarup Shakti, that is his inconceivable intrinsic potency. By her power, these four features of the Absolute Truth are manifest which are not different from the holy name, or who are not different from the holy name. So the first is his original form, his original swarup, Bhagavad swarup. Then the second is his splendor. That doesn't mean his impersonal Brahma Jyoti. What it means is, uh, it means his incarnations, his expansions, his dham, not only his original dham, but all the dhams of his expansions and incarnations, like Ayodhya, like Vaikuntha, like Lord Nishringadev's planet, and all the unlimited pastimes and activities of all those expansions and incarnations on their planets and when they come to this world. That's a mighty splendor for you. I'm sorry? And all there is, so all of the incarnations and manifestations in Krishna, in his original forms, all their associates who they uh, enjoy pastimes with. And then the third aspect of the absolute truth is the jiva. The jiva, and then the fourth is the manifestation of this material world, the unmanifest material nature. And this is compared. Hmm? I'm sorry? Well, yeah, the Tatasta Jiva, yeah. So these four are compared with the different features of the sun. There's the sun, uh, this, the sun itself. That's compared with Krishna's original form. Then there's the sun globe, that is anywhere we are in the world, um, we see a circle, that is the sun globe. And it always appears to be above our head, no matter where we are. So that's the sun globe, and that's the Lord's associates, his incarnations, his expansions, his doms, and all of his pastimes. Then the Tatasta Jiva, is compared with the uh, rays, the particles within the rays of the sun. Very atomic, infinitesimal particles of the rays of the sun. And then the reflected rays, like did you ever see, let's see, how, I, how can I show this? Let's, let's look at Anupam. He has a blue shirt, and the main sunlight is coming from that window. And that's the highlight. On the other side, there's a little bit light coming, but even if there was no real light coming, there's, it's called reflected light. Those who are artists, you know that on the dark side of anything, there's always a little bit reflected light. For example, if, if I have my arm in my sleeve, and I'm wearing a red shirt, 
uh, and a green skirt. Then the red skirt in the reflected light will be a little bit green. It's reflecting. So the reflection is the unmanifest material nature. And then the other part of the Hare Krishna mantra is that achintya swarup shakti or the hladini shakti or the swarup shakti embodied in Srimati Radhika who has three features the uh, unlimited features but it can be broken into three in this particular example you can break it into other threes <laughs> in other places the um, spiritual world the chit shakti or chit potency the antaranga potency the internal energy which includes all the whole spiritual world and then the um, to test the Shakti, which includes all the jivas. And then the um, Bahiranga Shakti, which includes the whole cosmic manifestation, subtle and gross. Speaking of subtle and gross, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur explains that no other process, karma, gyan, yoga, gives perfection, unless it's accompanied by bhakti yoga. Atonement does not relieve one from sins in the sense that it doesn't get to the root of the sin. Parikit Maharaj asked Sukadeva Goswami at the beginning of the sixth canto when Sukadeva Goswami was, which precipitated Sukadeva Goswami's discussion of Ajamil, who can't imagine a greater sinner than Ajamil except myself. And Ajamil got um, freed from all his sins at the root by the chanting of the holy names. So if I do atonement, that is austerities, giving and sacrifice, sitting in the, mixed, in the midst of five fires, sitting up to my neck in freezing cold uh, lake in the middle of the winter, Whatever austerities or, or anything that I do as an atonement to make up for my sins can counteract the sins that I committed, but it doesn't take away my desire to commit sins, which is the root of sin, avidya, ignorance of Krishna and the desire to be Krishna, is the root of sin. So that's only taken away by the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra, which is the reality of bhakti yoga. And we say bhakti yoga, it really means Sri Krishna's Sankirtan, the glorification of Krishna's name, fame, form, pastimes, entourage. Um, there's a very nice verse that Srila Gurudev quotes in the um, commentary, which Vasanti knows very well. Etavaneva loke smin, pungsam dharma parasprita, bhakti yoga bhagavati, tanama grahanadi bhi. Good. It means that the only dharma for human beings, the only real dharma is bhakti yoga, which is characterized by the chanting of the holy names. There's no other real dharma. Everything else is secondary to that. So, it's now 5 to 12, and yesterday, we discussed up to, um, up, you all have your, did they ever get any, um, those pads, or that's not for this semester? Will it happen, or not for this year? Cannot say. Okay. Some ingredients are not yet there. Okay, so just in case the ingredients don't come, uh, it's nice if you, yeah, it's nice if you have all your pen and paper, yeah. So, you can bring 
uh, if you need it. Otherwise, if you just want to hear, that's fine too. Um, so yesterday we came to the stage of nista. Let's pull out our pull out our charts. Yesterday we came to nista, which is the stage of steadiness as anartha navriti really starts setting in and anartha start going away and one becomes fixed and determined. So let's go there everybody. Let's turn our chart until we come to Shikshastika number three. And the second phrase of the first verse, this reminds me of the Krishna takes birth in the first universe and in the second second of his first birth in the first universe. He takes his first second in the second universe and the second second in the first universe. Then in the third second of his birth in the first universe, he takes the first second of his uh, birth in the third universe, which is the second second in the second universe, and the third second in the first universe. We're talking about Krishna's road show throughout the universe. <laughs> That's what this reminds me of. It's so complicated. And for 125 years, imagine how many seconds are in 125 years. He just goes from universe to universe. Anyway, so back to Bhajan Rahasya. So, the... Okay, so Nista. Oh, I already lost it. So Nista, the second phrase of the first verse of Shikshastakam, Baba Mahadava Minirvapanam, the fire of repeated birth and death begins to be extinguished as the ignorance is gradually destroyed. Then this corresponds with the third verse of Shikshastakam. Remember that the th first verse includes each phrase of the first verse in, includes one of the subsequent verses, one of the subsequent seven verses. So then of the next verses, the third verse, Trinadapi Sunichena, Tarorapi Sahishnana, Amanina Manadena, Kirtaniya Sadahari. Humility is starting to set in. Again, starting because the epitome of humility comes in Prem. Gurudev explained that the um, coward boys can all kill Kansa and other demons, Agasura, but they have so much humility that they are dependent on Krishna and wait for him to do it. Mother Yasoda, a drop of her breast milk is the Kiradak ocean that Kiradak Shai Vishnu lies in, a drop of her breast milk. But still, she's supremely humble. She doesn't think of that. So, Baba Mahadavagni, the fire of repeated birth is death is beginning to extinguish. And how does that happen? Because humility is starting to come. As soon as we are prepared to offer all respects to others, and not desire any respect for ourselves. Being like a tree, even if someone comes to cut us down, offering our fruits and flowers, bark, whatever we have. I think you all know the story of the king who was coming back from a hunting excursion. You do? You want to tell it? The king. Loud. The king was passing by a mango tree. And then he saw there were some kids throwing stones. And he was sitting there and relaxing. He was just taking a break. And then the kids came by and then they started throwing the stones at the mango tree. And then the... the Why? Well, they were just playing. So that the mangoes will fall. Yeah, so they will get some mangoes. So that happened. Then all the mangoes started falling from the tree. And uh, one of the mangoes, it did hit the king. Mango or the rock? Mm. Oh, the rock, the rock. <laughs> Mango's not so bad, but a rock is pretty I bad. Mean, 
thinking about the, the king taking rest, but no, that was, it was one of the, the stones that the kid was throwing that hit the king and then made him. Where did the hit him? He hit him in the eye. And so it made him, yeah, and so he couldn't see it, make him blind. So then what happened? And then, so, so you know, so then all the soldiers of the king, they said, oh, let's, let's cut the, the kids and then let's punish them. And then the king said, no, 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 don't uh, punish them. Actually, we, we need to reward them with maybe some land part of my kingdom. Why? Because... Um, Look at the tree. Because the tree, because I am not less than the tree. Am I less than the tree? No. The, no, they are throwing stones at the tree and... Um, the tree is returning the their tree stones. Is, it's actually in return giving them sweet mangoes and sweet hmm. fruits. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not less than that tree. Good, thank you. So that's an example of Trinadapi, uh, Tororapi, tur Sahishnana, being more tolerant than a tree. Hmm? Even if someone urinates on your head, don't get angry, be tolerant. And if somebody like loves to abuse you, build him a hut in your backyard so he can always abuse you, to help you be humble. Huh? Make a fence with him inside the fence? So that's uh, what corresponds with nista, de fixed determination, the third verse of Shikshastakam, the second phrase of the first <laughs> verse of Shikshastakam, the which pair of the holy names? Um, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. So that's the third pair of names. Okay. And we'll end there and ask if there's any question or comments for the next 10 minutes. Isn't it the fourth pair of names? Fourth pair, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, and then comes Hare Hare. Isn't it Hare Hare? Is this Hare Hare? No, it's Krishna Krishna. Krishna Krishna. And speaking of Nista, uh, speaking of Nista, when Srila Gurudev was in the West, and he was talking about Nista with the example of Srila Haridas Thakur when they were whipping him and beating him and all of his skin and, and muscles were coming off and he was just some broken bones and blood. But he was chanting loudly the Hare Krishna mantra. And then Gurudev said, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. And then he made all the devotees chant at the top of their lungs the Hare Krishna mantra again and again to teach us how to take shelter no matter what. So what was the conclusion? It's Krishna Krishna? Yes, yes Krishna, Krishna Krishna is Nista. Okay, so by following the different verses, the different phrases, begging, and we didn't do this in the beginning, so we'll do it at the end. Oh Prabhu, you are not a book. You are Shulabhati Vinodhak or yourself. You are Chaitanya Mahaprabhu yourself, you are Radha and Krishna and your associates yourself. And here we are, the 20 of us, sitting at your lotus feet and hearing personally from you about the glories of bhajan. Please shower your mercy upon us so that we can realize what you're personally telling us and take away all doubts in the mercy and glory of the Holy Name. So any other questions or comments? Yes, Prabhu. Uh -huh. By the way, that's Vasanti. Green. On the green? Okay. I go yeah. I'll talk to you later. Okay. Um, okay, yesterday I was um, kind of uh, meditating on this map here and trying to figure it out where I'm standing there. And so I say, okay, I've got the Shada, so I should be about there, the second. And then um, then you, you actually said that you were actually there too. So I couldn't believe it, uh, and it kind of... I was being puffed up, I haven't even reached right. <laughs> <laughs> I must be really puffed up then. Um, 
then it it bring me to think that this is depressing. I mean, depressing is not the right word. More mm -hmm. like um, discouraging. Uh -huh. discouraging. Discouraging. Yes. Um, that we don't go that far. That I mean, and thinking that okay, you've seen Paupad, you've seen Narayan Maharaj, you probably seen Shida Swami as well. No, actually, no, I, didn't, okay. I didn't come to be attracted to him till after he physically left. Govinda um, Maharaj. Once. Yeah, go ahead. And um, so, on my idea is that, I mean, I read um, Jaiva Dharma, and you, you see some devotee meeting a great soul, and about a week, not even, they, they obtain the mercy of the holy name. Um, so, how to deal with that? I mean, you just said before in this class that we have to be patient. But patient, it's not my nature. Um, I don't, <laughs> it's, I, it's hard to deal with patience. And I mean, we, we want to see that we're getting somewhere. So, how to deal with this impatience and, and how, yeah. Okay, so the question is, how do we become patient and how do we become hopeful when we understand where we are <coughs> in this series of things? So the more we advance, the less we think we're advanced. So, um, and we can't tell really what's happening. Srila Bharti Maharaj gave, I asked him a similar question, and he said, when the if the tap, you know, the water tap, you turn it off, but it's still not fully off, and so like there's a drip and a drip and a drip of a broken tap. And then, gradually, that drip, the drips start making a hole in a concrete floor. So where did that hole come from? Did it come from the last trip? Or did it come from the first trip? So things are happening even if we don't know that they're happening. As long as we are in the process. If I'm hearing about the process, as we're hearing now, uh, that is singing the bhajans, remembering the prayers, remembering the pastimes, while we're chanting, and being in Sadhu Sangha and the, the do's and the don'ts. As I'm hearing about the process, I can think also which part of the process am I not doing? And then which can I do more seriously? Like for example, the first few years of my association with Srila Gurudev, I never went to the bhajan period. And then after a few years I started going. So as we, and then after a few years after that, I started realizing that, gee, this is about me. So the more we do all the procedures of the process in good association, then the advancement is sure to come. I asked Gurudev once why some of my guy brothers who had the most association with Srila Prabhupada, um, like traveling with him year after year, and being in his room all the time. Why is it that they now turn against you? I asked Gurudev, and blaspheme you. So he said, because they never really associated with Prabhupada, they only associated externally, but they didn't try to understand his inner moods or inner desires and do the needful on that. So, we can actually be hopeful knowing that, wow, I'm where I am now because I haven't been seriously doing so many things that I'm so fortunate to be hearing now. I need more Shrestha Sadhu Sangha. Shrestha means topmost. And I need more singing of the bhajans and praying to the bhajans. Oh, when I'm singing the bhajans, oh, say for example, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. I'm singing your song, but it's not yet my song. 
when will my heart become one with your words? When will my heart become one with your heart that was melted when you sang your words? So not only singing their songs, but praying to the author of the songs. So there's lots of things, lots of artha pravritis to keep us busy for more and more advancement. Um, another thing is that Gurudev said, uh, his analogy was, if you have a rope, and the rope is um, going back and forth on a rock, you don't see anything happening. But if you keep going back and forth on the rock, gradually it will start making an impression. And those impressions are, are called sunscars. Uh, sunscars, impressions from spiritual pious activities, start changing our way of thinking. And he gave the example of uh, one of his disciples from <coughs> Delhi who was not married and she was a secretary and she used to walk to the office like that <laughs> with her swinging bag and thinking I'm an office girl and I'm single and so on and so forth. But then she got married and she started having children and diapering the babies and then activity upon activity upon activity the impression started coming in. The sun scars of I'm a mother. So the activities, and then with attention, start changing our impressions. So we can be very hopeful. And so often Gurudev said, don't be hopeless. Be hopeful for, wow, the goal. We were just hearing yesterday or reading yesterday that um, Mukunda, who was it in Srila Bharti Maharaj's class, I think also, from the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Mukunda was an associate of Mahaprabhu, but he began associating with Maya bodies. Bad association is one of the worst things we can do for our bhakti. So we can assess what's good association, what's bad association, and free ourselves from what's an impediment. So he was associating with mayavadis. And when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu heard of that, heard that, then the next time he wanted to associate, Mahaprabhu said, tell him he can't associate with me. I won't let him in to come and see me for a few million births. So they went back, hmm? 1, thousand births. So then they went back and told him that, and he began jumping and dancing in great joy. Wow, it's only going to be a thousand births before I can come in association with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, hearing about his excitement, his enthusiasm, and eagerness, he said, "Tell him to come right now." So what looks like our present associate, uh, present <coughs> condition doesn't have to remain <coughs> like that. Also, Tamron, you're going to tell? Uh, one very important aspect is no matter how bad is our situation, once we are in ideal association, we become very happy by the influence of that association. So although Shraddha is the first stage, Sadhu Sangha, the next stage, is actually most important for the practicing devotee. At any time, yeah, we need Sadhu Sangha. And once we become convinced about that, then only what we are doing in this world is, where can I find ideal association? And that is the birthplace of bhakti. Without Sadhu Sangha, that means Sat Sangha, no possibility that bhakti will Manifest. And once we are in Sadhu Sangha, then all the problems for ourselves or what is going on in the world, they are no longer make any yeah, disturbance. Why? Because we have the sun, the light, yeah, the Thank you. Yeah. Right. He's uh, confirming what Srila Bharati Maharaj <laughs> mentioned the other day, the other night, that all good qualities start coming automatically by that chase the Sadhu Sangha. Yes. Can I yesterday make a question? Yesterday he was describing about the, yesterday uh, at the end of the class he was describing about Artha Pravriti 
and uh, I personally find it very helpful instead of thinking how bad I am and how horrible my artists are, uh, 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 instead of thinking uh, what can I do today for Krishna. Uh, exactly. What can that's I do to get out of it? Encouraging. Great. That's not discouraging, that's very encouraging. That's fabulous. Thank you for that. And what you just said reminded me of something that happened with me and Srila Gurudev in 1996. We were, I think it was in New York or one of those eastern cities. And my god sister spent two hours telling me how bad I am in all ways, <laughs> forms and features. So then, so then I was completely like lamenting. And then we went on a morning walk with Srila Gurudev. And all throughout the entire morning walk, I was lamenting how bad I am. So then he usually doesn't call for me after a walk, but he did that day. And I went in his room and he said, it's not enough to think how bad you are, because he can read minds. He said, we have to think on something positive. And then he quoted the ninth verse of Manashiksha. Marisha na takte prajavapina chandra prajavane, um, which means, oh mind, let me tell you something good you could think about. Oh mind, always think of Krishna, Krishna Chandra, the moon of Vrindavan, as the um, lord of my mistress, Srimati Radhika. And always think of Srimati Radhika as my Swamini, my mistress. <coughs> oh mind, always think of Lalita as uh, the most intimate friend of Srimati Radhika. And Vishaka as Shiksha Guru. And always remember Giri Raj Govardhan and Radhakund as the two most merciful personalities who can give me rati or attachment for your lotus feet, for the lotus feet of the Lord, Radha and Krishna. So thank you very much for that. That was a great comment. Yeah, yeah. Um, my question is, uh, can hopelessness and discouragement be a sign of advancement in light of uh, verses in the Gita that talk about equanimity between distress and happiness and other opposite and dualities? So can hopelessness and discouragement be a sign of advancement or a sign of more humility? Well, hopelessness means I have no hope of coming, but if I add hoping against hopelessness, as in the prayer of Srila Rupa Goswami, although there's no hope, I'm so wretched, I'm still hoping. Why am I hoping against hope? Because you are Agadamana. Even though Aga, the embodiment of all sin, that big snake, wanted to kill you, you went into his mouth and you liberated him. So when I see how much mercy you have for the sinners, then I get hope, even though I'm hopeless. So hoping against hope, not just hopelessness, not just discouragement. And it's the order of your guru, don't be hopeless. Gaurapranandi Hari Hari Ho Shula Bhakti Vinota Gaur Ki Jai Shri Bhajan Rahasya Ki Jai Shula Gurudeva Ki Jai Shula Prabhupada Ki Jai Gaur Premanandi <coughs> Yes, you'll always find Rajanath Prabhu mentioning Sadhu Sangha, everything happens. <coughs> and if the Sadhu Sangha is not available, sometimes I would ask Shula Bharati Maharaj and others too that well, okay, now I've had your association, now I'm going back to the West, so what to do? So he gave a wonderful, hopeful analogy, just as the, uh, what is it, it's in the sky? The cloud is in the sky, and the peacock is on the ground, but still they're friends. Whenever the peacock sees the cloud in the sky, he starts dancing and singing. The sun is in the sky, way up in the sky. And the lotus is way down there in the water. But still they're friends. And the lotus blossoms when it sees the sun. So even though the sadhu is so great and we're so low, we can still be friends if we remember their instructions and think about them until we see them again. 